Hello, I'm Dick Tormus, and uh, today I want to show you um, <clears throat> different ways that you can create your own landscapes. You know, a lot of people spend a lot of time traveling around, taking photographs of landscapes, and uh, I want to just show you that if you uh, know certain kinds of things, you can actually create landscapes that are very, very exotic and very interesting, and they come out of your own head. And to me, that's a very fun arts thing to do, to have it come out of your own head. There are certain things you have to understand if you're going to do that. And <clears throat> I, I'm one of these guys that likes to get to the fundamentals of what, what the visual world is all about. And to, just to start with, let me just give you an example of what I mean. If you try and explain what a line is, you know, you could say, well, this is a line along the outside edge of this paper <clears throat> because it's separated from other stuff and you can see the line. But most lines are created by something that if the surface, some part of it is disappears from you, like a cylinder. See how that creates a line along this edge right here. Uh, so if it's a cylindrical shape, the edge comes right off of what is actually going around the corner and hiding from you. You could say it. that would be a good way to talk about that. Um, <clears throat> another way to talk about it is when the, you have flat planes and if you change the plane, like this, you can see that's creating a line down the middle of the page. But that's because it's two different planes that are reacting. And you could fold that again and you get another plane, you end up with four lines showing up. So that's the fundamental. I think it's very important to get back to what was what what is a line? What what makes makes that and and we we create a line just by drawing it and stuff, but a lot of times we don't think about what creates a line. So that's the number one thing that you have to be aware of. Number two thing is that there's certain fundamental things you have to think about. Uh, one is the, the uh, if, you exp if you try and go through like the cubicle world and cylindrical world, like we just were talking about, and then the spherical world. I, I think of those three being the fundamental uh, shapes that we have to deal with. And that's what all landscapes are actually gonna be coming out of. So if you have a, a cubicle world, it's something like this. It has lots of different planes. And then another one would be so, a cylindrical world, like this, like a can or garbage can. It's like I'm missing a little bit there. And then also the sphere itself. So if you can actually figure out those three and start to manipulate those a little bit, you can do a lot of really fun stuff. So let's start with um, just playing with the, uh, the, the, cu the cube itself and how does the landscape, how does that help you to understand what a landscape comes from? If you start with the, the front of the, of the cube like this and you go back in space, these three lines are parallel to each other. These two are parallel to each other, and so are these. Okay, so in the back end of the cube, we need another number three line back here. And once we find that corner, we can cut across with a number two line that's parallel to number two. So that's the fundamental thing that we're playing with. Now, let's just make that more organic so that it becomes more like a landscape type stuff, okay? Uh, and that just uh, so you know it, there's uh, also another way that is used to draw these lines going back in space like this and that, and I see isosceles uh, cube, but these are still parallel. These are still parallel, and one more back here is the number two, and this is the number three, we'll say. So that would be maybe another way that you might draw cubes. But um, let's, let's uh, explore something here. If we think about 
this shape right up on the top right here and we just study instead of making it be that shape what if it were a shape like this what if and this were the top of a cube okay and then it, but follow the same rules come down with your straight lines off the corners one two three okay copy this line down below and copy this line down below here <clears throat> it's gonna it's gonna go back in space like this maybe back hidden like that so that's another way of thinking of this in more of an organic way and that's what starts to get you into mountain shapes especially like around the badlands of south dakota you see stuff like this a lot let's let's play with that in a, in a in another way now <clears throat> one of the things that i need to talk to you about right off the bat is artistic shapes there's very boring shapes and there's very artistic shapes things that are fun to look at uh, a boring shape would be something like this and an artistic shape would be maybe something that looks like that it's much more fun to look at it has simple lines to it simple angles to it a lot of variety to it if you were going to come off of this with up and down lines they'd almost line up and it's a little hard to tell what the heck that is right but if you play with this other one and you add some depth and space to it you come off this corner here and this one out here down down and so that these are all parallel to each other. Say they're number two lines are parallel. They actually run the same direction in space. And this one, if you copied that one, it goes on a slight angle like this. This one goes, if, if you're gonna put a line down below this, first of all, measure how much this is and start in the right place and then copy this number right here. We'll let's call it a number four because it isn't quite the same as number three and just run this parallel to it and so you end up with a shape that's quite interesting usually in nature if this were a mountain i think some one of the things you'd probably do is instead of slanting it you might slant it out like this and slant this one out a little bit like that so that it has a little more of a flowing angle to it same way with this flow it out And same way with this one. Maybe maybe it could come way out like this and cut back. All right. So then then it becomes even like it's flowing down like a actual mountain might might do more. Um, so that's one of the important things. Another thing that is important to know about the cube is when you when you draw a cube, just the normal one, like this and you want to put another cube on the top, what you usually, what I do is I guess where, and I, I run it parallel to these, but it's gonna be a little smaller in the front. So these two lines would actually show, and they're running parallel, number one, 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 and this is like a two, two, and this is like a number two in there, okay? And then run the lines straight up and down, we're gonna call these number threes, Shoot this straight up in the air, straight up in the air, like that. Cut off a number two here, so it's like this. Now this can be turned into a mountain. I mean, I'm not doing this just for the cube's sake. I mean, to actually, it, it could become a mountain like this. So like, for instance, we want to do, um, if, say we're gonna just put a, a little bit of a shape, an odd shape like this in here and come up with these lines and you see you're starting to get you get more of a and i might even just let this come together as a point up on the top so that would be the stacking kind of like you're stacking here uh the lines would be running up and down but you see you just sort of play with it being more organic than the cubicle structure. 
So let's think about this a little bit more. <clears throat> if we uh, if we play with uh, like cubical roads and and, and everything when I speak of cubes in cubical drawings, I'm thinking of straight lines, sharp angles, whatever that turns out to be. That's that's kind of growing out of cube, out of cubeness when you play with angles, but and not if you start doing this, you're into cylinders. Then you're going to be creating cylinder shapes and stuff. So we we want to stay away from curves for a bit, and then pretty soon we're going to mix them all together. But let's just start with a like a uh, a line that is an artistic line. <clears throat> We'll say something on that order, and if you if you double that line, I'm going to just cut it off here, go like this, and double that line. Okay, so now we have like a, a thick line, and then if say you want to turn that into a wall, then come down straight down with lines off the corners, just like the cube. The corners of the cube is where you come straight down. So just kind of think cubical when you do this and run all your lines straight down off each corner. If it hits something, you got to stop it, let it go behind it. <clears throat> and then I'm going to cut it off about right here. That means I'm going to copy that line right up above. I'm going to run this up a little higher. This line here and this line are the same, the same parallel. They're parallel to each other. This one comes back in space here, like the one up above it. If you have a double, a double thing, you can actually keep it always the same. It's like a double line that runs across through that. These are hidden back behind. This comes to here and stops because it's actually going back behind there. And let's see. This one would uh, come down. I'm gonna I'm gonna copy that one here. This is the copying. This line is copying that one. Okay, and I'm getting down here almost out of sight. I want to make sure you can see it. I'll just cut that up a little bit. All of these lines are copying what are right above them. And this one comes back down. I don't know. I think this would just be parallel to those those two lines would be the same see now you've got an interesting interesting shape uh <clears throat> if if you had if this were a mountain and you just extended these lines and and bulged them outward sort of you could you could get stuff like this see so just erase those lines bring this down and running these off like this and this off like that. See how you can sort of start seeing what what this can create. So you're starting to get like a mountain shape out of this. So inside it, you you could actually play with it a little bit more and not have it be so systematic. Maybe cut cut this across like this. What what seems to look more like a, a cliff on a mountain. Maybe this could all join together here and get rid of all of this so that it flattens it out a little bit. You can see now it's it's coming down. I'm gonna just change this a little bit. You can see just starting with something very stiff and then turning it into something more organic is what it's all about. There'd be a little bit of a, back to the that corner and you can see it starts to become kind of mountain like and this is all coming out of cubicle straight lines and all of that type of stuff um, <clears throat> just as an example of the same type of thing let me show you something that's really important to know how to do when you're playing with creative landscapes if you were to take a shape like this like that, and you add lines here, and copy the lines up above, okay, you get something that looks like that, right? And this is the top surface, okay? 
uh, let's just take exactly the same shape. I'll start with something that looks just almost identical. We're going to go back here, come in here, and come all the way over to there. Now, so this is this is the same shape as that. Remember, we're trying to find an artistic shape too when we do this, right? And then the next step is to uh, what? What if you did this instead? What if the lines came inside like that? And get rid of that little guy and we'll cut across here and then went down like that so this line is copying this line's copying that one this line's copying this one this line's copying well there isn't a bottom to that we could if we wanted it maybe a little bit could show right there but now see how that becomes a hole this is an a, a object that's sticking up in space this is the same shape, but it turned into a hole. That's how how you can get like crevices and holes in 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 your uh, landscape, and and also lake lakes and rivers all dig down into the earth like that, right? So that's kind of a, a really good thing to know how to do too. Now let's just play with that a little bit more, because you can uh, with that like roads that go off to the distance. Let's just give us some, let's give us a hill here. And we're gonna have a road that runs off like this and runs back in space like that and runs over here. And I'm gonna just use a little bit of perspective in this, even though we haven't really overly talked about perspective, but I'm gonna start this about this big and then I'm gonna run, oh, I'm gonna gotta keep these as angles because we're not dealing with cylinders yet. All right, so that say that's a road, and it could stick up in the air if you want it to stick up in the air a little bit. That's how that edge would look. That would put it up, up in space a little bit more. And maybe you have a dotted line down the middle of the road. Okay, but that that kind of gives you an idea, and then to make this a little more organic, maybe it's more like a clip. So maybe this comes way down like that and, and drops, drops off into whatever it is. And this one may be like this. So it's really running very, very high. You can see all of a sudden it changes what it is you're looking at. And then maybe this would drop way down in here somewhere. It seems like that would fit that quite well. Um, so that's that's a, a, a way that you build a road up into the air a little bit if you want a road in your landscape and stuff. So <clears throat> the the neg remember and let's just out here we're going to just do a a hole in the landscape here and maybe from here there's a back behind here there's a little road that cut, cuts across over here and that you get some holes in there. Now, if this fades in, it, it might just fade into the land down below and run flat too. Or if it stops, it should copy this line up on the top if you want it to, to, to come to an abrupt end. I hope that's showing. Yeah, it is, okay. So that's the cubicle thing. That's the first thing we want to talk about. Now let's, let's switch to a cylinder. A little bit and see what the cylinder will, will bring bring for us a cylinder of course is this is the basic idea of a cylinder is an oval which is the top of of this shape it's that little top right there and you want to get that on the right artistic angle if uh, depending on where it's located too if it gets above your eye then it starts to curve in in a reverse way if it gets down to where you can see it down below you, if it were straight below your eye, you would have a perfect circle. If it's slightly, you can see that oval gets tighter and tighter and tighter until it becomes a straight line. So that's stuff you have to think about when you're doing this stuff. You know, when people just draw and don't think about it, I don't, you gotta think about it a little bit, right? Okay. So here you have a cylinder top and, and the edges, these two lines are always parallel to each other. This one's parallel to this. 
the important part of a cylinder is it's the where the surface is bending it's got to bend and hit right on that edge right there right on the perfectly on that corner if you do that you're going to have a lot better looking cylinder than if you just <clears throat> loosely put it over here or way out here somewhere so you got to play with that quite precise this curve right here is copied down below basically it probably if you were really serious about it you'd say the further down it goes to more the closer to a perfect circle it'd be but if for just uh, drawing sake if you can just make sure that this curves right into that right on that edge you'll have a pretty nice looking uh, 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 cylinder and we're going to be making this cylinder be very much more organic right that's the idea of a landscape you don't see much stuff like that in Mother Nature. Maybe the, if you think of this, little devil's tower, maybe a couple trees down here. So, you, you know, that's sort of organic or making a, a cylinder a little more organic. So, the, but that's where it, it leads you to that type of stuff. So when you look at Devil's Tower, you, you see a cylinder, sort of a cone cylinder. It seems to come out bigger on the bottom than it is on the top, but basically it's a cylinder shape. Uh, <clears throat> and the same kind of thing applies to a cylinder. If you um, if you play with it a little bit more like the top of the cylinder typically it'd be that but if the top were a little more organic and artistic um this this <clears throat> you'd play with it the same way you come off these corners same way here you come off the corners but now you have three corners so you have to come off that one too and that's what helps you to find some interesting sort of more interesting shapes and then once again, copy the, the top there, copy it down below. So you have the same shape up here as down here. This would be a little bit further back up behind. So it actually would enter and, and disappear up on top like so. So whereas this comes down and copies the top up there. But now you can, once you get this down, let's just show how exotic you can make shapes because you what you need for a landscape is lots of interesting shapes and <clears throat> so let's just start with something like this like that for the top top of the cylinder okay and the, no it's a cylinder because it's all curved shapes going around and then coming down like so straight up and down lines basically until you decide something different that's that would be the beginning of it and then copy this line down below swings in like that this line up here you can see comes down it's back in space a little bit so it's not going to come way down in here it's going to start up in here it's going to copy that line here looks like it kind of curves up slightly and then the one more back here this has to copy that all right so we have a nice organic sort of shape that we're playing with on that and that makes it kind of fun now let's make it be more mountain like or uh, forms that you would see in nature probably these lines would curve out more like this and then maybe come back like that because they just tend to do that I'm going to bring that in a little bit more like that. Round this off. Okay, same way over here. What if this came out like this and then curved around like so? Same way back there, this one. I'm going to run this way down and curve it around. So that now that starts to, to look more like you would see uh in the in a landscape something like that uh, 
you uh, when you uh, explore this, I mean, try try all kinds of different shapes so that you really practice this, play with this stuff, um, and and you'll find that it it the more you practice and play with it, when you do the very fine original piece that you want to do, you've got a lot more ability to do it. Yeah. All right. So that's the the basic idea. Now also. It, this might just flow down and flow right into the space like that. If it does, if this flows down and disappears, then all of this line would not be there because it's flowing out of sight. Same way with this. If you want this to flow back and, and turn into the landscape back here, and the same way with this one, you've got to get rid of this line. If there isn't like a sharp angle, remember how, how we talked about the the, when it changes planes, if it's a gradual plane change, it's actually going to be sort of an inside out cylinder shape that's that's curving off. So that that kind of gives you a bit of an idea of how that start it's starting to look a lot like a mountain, isn't it? Like a shape of a mountain. But it's a very unique mountain. You'd have to have a, a drone to get up in the air to look at that to get it from that angle or a helicopter or something. But the, when you do, do the drawing, you just project yourself up there and you can get all kinds of cool stuff that way. Um, I was thinking of how, you know, when you stack like a cylinder on top of a cylinder, that's, that's how that would look right there. You get rid of that line and you'd have a cylinder stacked up on the top of that. Now, if you wanted this to be more fitting to the mountain. This might be a tower of some kind right now, but if you want it to be more fitting to the to the, the landscape idea, probably you'd have <clears throat> this um, come off of something a little more organic down here, like that, and then come up with these lines. It looks like this would show up up here, this would show up here, this would show up there. And maybe there'd be a, a slight oval like this. Would be maybe the top of that. You know, that just turns into another another little dimension up on top. So it's like playing with a, I'm gonna curve this in a little bit more there. I think it would look a little more natural. And this back in like so. But you can see that you, you can build your landscape. It's sort of basically that's what you're thinking. How do you build a, land, a landscape? Uh, if, if you had down below here a wall, a cylindrical wall, maybe it runs along like this. And if you want it like double thickness, you, once again, you can double the lines like this. Like so. All right, I think you can see all of that. Looks like we run off over on this side a little bit, but we'll play with this side. And this is just a wall running down below here. It's a cylindrical basis of it. Okay. And then if you copy this line down below, so you'd have a, a line down there. This, this, uh, this gets into a little more interesting. As you copy that line, see how it swings and it goes back up in like that in order to get that to fit. So you, this could turn into a stone wall. You could actually add the little stones in here. I think that, let's see, and follow the contour of this so that the stones all run along like this as they go. And you could cut, do every other one like that. You see how all of a sudden you can make that into a, a nice little wall to fit with your landscape. Looks like I'm missing a line back here though. And that might just swing around and curve back in like that. Okay, so so that's some of the stuff that you can play with. I'm looking here a little bit. Oh, we need to also play, let me make sure you know this as you play with your landscape. Um, 
let's see, let me just play with this shape here and think of it as an object, a, 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 a positive object, the same shape here, and think of it as a whole. And so I'd like to add this line back here because it makes, it gives this, this is like plus and this is minus and this is plus and this in a way, this is minus back here. It's positive space and a whole is negative space, right? Same shape, just the way in the same top, top here, but it becomes a whole and becomes a, um, so anyway, all of those things can be mixed together and and played with quite well. Let me try one more thing here too with this. Uh, this uh, play with the, the sphere. And what you don't think, oh, oh, does a sphere have lots of different types of potential stuff that can be part of a landscape? Yeah, it can. There's a lot of stuff. But first you have to understand the sphere. The sphere can have Another sphere behind it, another one behind it, another one behind that, another one over here, and maybe one that's sort of halfway between the two. So if you if you start stacking stuff, you end up with lots of interesting sort of shapes, right? So I mean that gives you a lot of types of things. Let's just think about that. That's a positive. That's building spheres, stacking spheres together. But also if you think about a bowl, it's a half of a sphere, right? So there's the uh, extra line shows how thick that sphere is. And you could put another one down below here. That, so it's kind of stacked. Put a few flowers in here. Another flower over here. And, and leaf or two, yeah. So you could make pots and all kinds of things out of it. but um here's the thing too if if you have a mountain if a mountain is a sphere and it comes down in here and runs into another mountain that's a sphere and a gray big sphere over here okay well what what can be interesting about that well just if you uh you can break it like we do the cylinder and the cube All right, I'm just gonna cut a hole in that. And then where do these lines go? Just like the cylinder or the cube, I guess, more. And these lines would run down like this. This one probably would run in there. This would run into it. See, all of a sudden you've broken that, that top of that spherical mountain and made it more interesting to look at. Let's try another hole over here. Let's just cut a jagged hole in here like so. And if that runs down like so, and maybe another one, let's have another one like this so that it just hangs, hangs out like this. I wonder if that's, yeah, it shows. Okay, and it cuts back. And this could come down like this then, cut off. And you've got all of the cliff formation over here. Um, and and then maybe in the background, you have another sphere that is back behind that one. And it maybe has a, a, a break in it too, like this one does. So it comes off like here and cuts back. And you, so you erase that line and then add these cliff lines coming down like so. So all of a sudden you start to get some pretty interesting landscape stuff going on here, right? Um, I'm gonna look at what I have here and see if there's a, you know, just like cylindrical holes, um, you know, maybe adding the sphere and the cylinder a little bit. If that were up there, this would come down, be a hole in the side of this. Maybe this actually runs on through like that. And then this mountain is back behind it. Once you put a line all the way across like that, it, it, it makes it go way into the background, right? So, um, 
So that's just some of the stuff. Let's just put a little sun up here. Because it's also a, a sphere, right? And and you have um, so anyway, you you start mixing the idea is that you mix all of these together and you end up with, you know, like down in here, maybe this comes goes back to the sharp angular stuff. I'm going to push this out a little bit. One of the things you don't want to do when you do a drawing is like what I started with here. If I were to cut that off right above this and I were to draw a line down and draw this one down, see both of them line up. That artistically is not good. You want one of them to be back in or out. So I'm going to just move this back in like here and get rid of this. Instead of having both those lines running into each other, now the line runs down in here. So that it's much more artistic if you don't let these lines run into each other. So that's be one one way to do it. There could be uh, you know land land formations that come off over here. Could be uh, in the background maybe mountains that run that are more like cubical mountains. That run back like this. What I usually do is draw the line like that, and then I come back into it and you go, okay, if I pull this line across and this one say going this way and go behind that one, so then you get more, you get space out of it. You get a little more space out of it by doing that. Um, and run this on in till it goes behind that one. <clears throat> Another thing that just I'll throw out just to finalize this off a little bit is the vegetation if you if you put uh pines if you if you add pines back here which are kind of like uh, you know almost uh triangular and then you fill you shade that stuff in you you get a a, a certain type of it it just adds more real to it if down here, if this is very, very close to you, say right in through here, then you might just add grass. And you know, you don't have to spend a lot of time on this stuff. You can, grass is just like a jiggle jaggly line. And once in a while, maybe you put a little flower or something out on it. And, and you can have one there and another one that's a little taller up in front, that's a little more jagged. So, I mean, that just gives you a few ideas of things to think about when you're making up a, a landscape. I think that it's it's a lot of fun, and you really can come up with some very very interesting things if if you play with that. Okay, that's a beginning for you, and then you know mainly it's a lot of work, practices, stuff. See what you come up with by yourself. Okay, thanks for watching.